In this video, we'll be discussing the operation and sample preparation for the TestCan Vega 3 scanning electron microscope that is located in the School of Chemistry and Material Science. Hello, my name is Aubrey Holland and I work in the School of Chemistry and Material Science Instrumentation Lab at Rochester Institute of Technology. Today we will be going over sample preparation, sample loading, and a software tutorial for the TestScan Vega 3 SEM system. Before we get started, I would just like to go over a few things that you have to do before operating the instrument. First, the SEM logbook should always be next to the instrument and must be filled out before using the SEM. You'll notice that in the logbook, you simply have to fill in the date, your name, what your sample is, when you began and stopped using the instrument, and finally, any comments about the quality of its operation. This helps us maintain the instrument and make sure there are no problems when operating the instrument. Furthermore, we also have an SEM SOP that should be next to the instrument at all times. Although you should already be trained on the instrument before using it, if you ever need to check back at what to do next, this SOP should be at the instrument for your use. Now we are going to move on to sample preparation. Today we are simply going to be using powdered sugar. So today I have two way boats. I have our sample stage, I have our sample, I have carbon double-sided tape, and finally, I have canned air to get rid of the excess sample that's on our stage. First, I'm going to pour some of our sample into the way boat. You really don't need very much um, to test it on the SEM. From here, I'm going to prep our stage by adding the double-sided carbon tape. So you will simply remove a piece of the carbon tape that we supply for you, and then you can put it onto the stage like so. Now it is double-sided, so all you have to do from here is take off the other side of the tape to expose the other part of the sticky carbon tape. From here, we are going to dip it into our sample. until it is reasonably coated. Now, it looks like I may have gotten some concentrated in one area here. So now I'm going to use the canned air to try to get rid of any excess. Now, the SEM will be going under vacuum, so it's very important to remove any of the excess powder that may be on your sample stage, because when it does go under vacuum, some of the excess sample could end up going up into the instrument, which is bad for the instrument. And so I'll just go over it one more time. And from here, the sample looks pretty good to go into our instrument. You can see that it is lightly coated, and now our SEM system should be able to adequately analyze this sample. Now we are going to go over the necessary steps in order to load a sample into the instrument. You will start by clicking on the Vega TC software. After you have been trained on the SEM, you or your research advisor should be given a profile that will show within this box. Today, I am simply going to log in with my own account. I have a manager's account, um, so you will generally not have to worry about the screen. So you can simply load into the software. This may take a few minutes for it to go through its self-test. You'll notice into this window off to the side that it shows the actual instrument with the chamber door and the sample. You will be able to see exactly how I'm uploading the sample on this portion of the screen. Once we have gone through 
uploading and loading our sample. We will go through every single window that you see on this screen. However, for the moment, I'm simply going to show you how to put your sample into the instrument. You are going to start by coming over here to the vacuum window and venting the system. Once you click vent, you will hear the instrument begin to vent. This is nothing to be alarmed by. This is what you should be hearing. It may take a few moments for the system to vent. Once the vacuum window has indicated that the venting is finished, we can now open the door and load our sample. Now you can see both on the instrument chamber in the live stream as well as on the screen that you can adjust the position of the stage here. If you use these buttons here, you can actually rotate your stage and this can assist you in loading your sample. You can also do this by clicking these positions here as well. So say I wanted to go to position two this screen will come up, but you can just press OK, assuming nothing will occur if you move the sample, or excuse me, if you move the stage. And so now it has rotated, and now I'm going to load the sample. You will want to screw the sample into place using this designated screwdriver, and this can simply hold the sample in place and gives you the ability to look at your sample from different angles without worrying that it may fall into the chamber later. Now that we have screwed the sample into place, we will be able to close the chamber and bring our system back down to vacuum. If you have to load multiple samples, that's especially when the rotating of the stage can be very helpful. Now that we have closed the chamber door, we can press pump in the vacuum window in order to bring the chamber down to a vacuum. Again, the instrument at this point will make noise. This is normal and you have nothing to be concerned about. It may take a few moments for the system to come down to vacuum pressure, but it should take no longer than two and a half minutes. If it does take longer than this amount of time, please see Tom Alston immediately. If the system does not seem to go down to vacuum, Tom may recommend that you use isopropanol in order to clean the O-ring of the instrument. Now that the system has come down to a vacuum, you will be ready to go through the software portion of this tutorial. In order to load our sample, we will first have to boot up the software by going to the Vega TC icon. From here, it will ask you for your password. You can work with Tom Alston in order to set up an account for this software. So I'm just going to put in my personalized password. And this is a screen that only comes up for managers, so you should not be concerned with seeing this screen. It may take a few minutes for the self-test to be complete, and then you'll see the software open. Before we turn on the electron beam, I'm just going to go through a few things that you'll see when you get the software open. First, you're going to see the chamber view off to the right. This is actually a camera that is inside of the SEM, so you can see exactly where your sample is with respect to the electron beam. One thing that we're really going to want to be careful of is that we do not allow our sample to hit anything within the chamber, including the electron beam. And that's not going to be much of an issue with this sample specifically because it's small. However, if your sample is larger, you will want to keep an eye on this screen frequently. 
furthermore, you'll see that we have this histogram here. This can help us with the contrast of our image, and I'll be going into a little bit more detail about that when we actually have the electron beam up and we are actually looking to image our sample. Finally, we have our stage control. Um, this is going to allow us to look at different samples at any given time, as well as adjusting the working distance, tilt, rotation. Um, there's several different choices here. Uh, you'll actually also need to use this when you're actually loading your sample, because when the door is open and everything, you have the ability, if you watch in this screen, you can see it rotate. You can see that it rotates, and this can help you put your sample into the sample stage and screw it down. And finally, you'll see over here to the left, this is actually going to be the control panel that we are going to be using throughout this tutorial in order to optimize our image. And so um, you should have access to this control panel. So furthermore, from here, a few things to discuss. Uh, we actually have kind of a cheat sheet that can help you in order to optimize your image. Um, said sheet has the magnification, working distance, and beam intensity, and it presents a range of each of these that can help you optimize your image. And I'll be getting into that a little bit more as well after we've turned on the electron beam. Finally, the few things that I would like to acknowledge before we begin is that you'll want to be sure that your vacuum is completely ready. You will not be able to image your sample if it is not ready. And from here, if you do want to go into low vacuum, you should come down to full pressure first before going into low vacuum. But that is a tutorial for a more personalized imaging needs. Now that we are ready to look at the electron beam, you'll see in this window here, we have options to have different KVs for our electron beam. Um, this will be based on what your sample is. You can refer to papers or talk to Tom Alston about what would be the best KV for you to use. For this sample today, we will continue with 15 KV. And so you're just simply going to click HV to turn on the electron beam. Once it has gotten completely started, you'll notice that your sample will appear in the SEM scanning window. From here, this is completely optional, but in order to optimize your image, I will generally go to adjustments in the electron beam window, and then I will go to auto gun heating. This may take a few moments to load. And you can see that this auto gun heating actually adjusted the contrast a little bit. Today we are lucky enough that our sample is in slot 7, you'll see in the chamber view, and it also shows it on the stage control. However, if you do need to be looking in a different position, you can simply click on one of these in the standard test scan carousel window. And so say you had a sample in slot 1, you could sim simply click 1 and it will actually take you to that position. Now we're going to go back to number seven. And to start, you are going to want to make this image almost as clear as you can, because otherwise the electron beam may not be able to optimize your image um, in later focusing. This image already looks pretty clear. However, just an example, um, what you may see. So first you're going to double click on the scanning window. And this will give you the ability to only adjust this portion. So for example, we're going to go to the magnification. And if you click, if you go clockwise, it will zoom in. And if you go counterclockwise, it will zoom out. So the same goes for our working distance. If you go clockwise, you'll notice that our working distance is getting larger. And if you go counterclockwise, the working distance is getting smaller. You can monitor these by looking at this lower panel in the scanning window. So an example of when your image is out of focus on principle would be somewhat 
like this. You would not want to simply start from this and then move to a lower working distance. You would want to clear this image up before beginning. And so I'm going to do that for you now. And you can see that this looks a lot more defined and clear. And furthermore, before we actually begin getting into larger magnifications of our sample, we are also going to auto contrast. And this can also help us to better see all the components on our sample. It may take a few moments for the auto contrast to move. And furthermore, before we decide to get a larger magnification, I'm going to go over the histogram. And for this, you primarily, for the best image, want to have this bell curve be in the center of the histogram screen. But I will show you what each component of this does as well. So if you move the gamma, you'll notice that it is moving the top of the bell curve around. And you'll see that it's very, very bright when you go to the right, while it's very, very dark when you go to the left. For this reason, we like to try to keep it in the middle. Furthermore, if we adjust these on the sides, you'll notice if we put the max up, it will get darker. And if you go to the left, it will get lighter. And you can see how the gamma adjusts accordingly. And finally, for the minimum, it does the same thing except in reverse of the maximum. And so ultimately, we want to try to have this bell curve in the center of the screen in order to have the most optimal image. And so you can kind of toy around with this. We primarily only work with the gamma and we do not necessarily work with the max and the min very frequently. So I'd say this image is pretty well contrasted. If you are not comfortable with your image, you can feel free to adjust the gamma or try the auto contrast again. So now we are going to actually move in on our sample. You'll notice that I have focused it from this standpoint. And so now what we are going to want to do is we are going to want to adjust the working distance and Z. Um, you're going to want to select this rather than just the normal Z because this will not auto adjust its focus at all versus the working distance and Z will work to optimize and autofocus with your working distance. Um, so if we look up to the chamber view, you'll notice that it is very, very far away from the electron beam. This gives us a lot of space to work with when changing our working distance and Z. And if you refer to the cheat sheet that we have um, today, I'm going to be going to a working distance of around 10. And for a working distance of 10, the magnification should be around 2000 to 10K and the beam intensity should be around 10. And today, if you look to the side, you'll notice that our beam intensity in the info panel is 10. So I will be working under optimal conditions. When you are adjusting where your sample is in the chamber, you will want to be very careful when you're adjusting the Z because we do not want to get the sample too close to the electron beam. In order to do this, we are going to, first of all, change things stepwise. So you don't necessarily want to go straight from 24 to 10 for your working distance. So I'll start by going to 15. Furthermore, before making any kinds of adjustments, you will want to toggle your cursor over the stop just in case you need to stop it while watching the chamber view. So we are going to click OK and it will start moving. Now, again, you'll notice that I kept my cursor over the stop button the entire time, just in case this did begin to get too close to the electron beam. So now I will take my working distance down to 10. And now we are actually ready to optimize and focus our image. So we are going to be referring to our control panel here. 
This knob here is able to adjust the stage. And if you look in the scanning window, you'll see that as I move this knob, it will move the image accordingly. Furthermore, we already went over this a little bit. This top knob is our magnification and this bottom knob is our working distance. So now I am going to work on optimizing this image and you can see how I'm doing so down on the panel below. I'm going to start by double clicking in order to only focus on this spot here. If you would like to focus on a larger range, you should be able, you can either move it around as so, or you can change the size. It can be kind of difficult and not want to work with you in changing the size though. So I'm not going to at the moment. We're going to start by zooming in just a little bit to our sample. And then we're going to work on focusing this. And it won't always be as simple as moving your knob clockwise. Uh, you may need to toy around with this and go back and forth at times. And so we can already see that this is a significantly clearer image than it was before. So generally I will focus on the edge or the corner of a sample before going into the sample simply because you can see there's a larger amount of contrast here. Um, it's entirely optional, however, it just helps me personally to get the best image possible. So now I'm going to continue to zoom in. Today we are going to go again to a magnification between 2000 and 10K. And you can see how the magnification is changing based on this window here again. So now that I'm pretty focused in here, I'm actually going to move my sample over and I'm going to auto contrast again. And so now if we zoom in, you will start to notice that this is actually a grid system. Furthermore, if you're seeing this and you're kind of having a hard time seeing your image, you do have the ability to change the scanning speed. And so you can come up to this key or button here and click on it. And you could slow down or excuse me, you can increase your scan speed and that will give you a bit of a clearer image. Generally, when you're just simply working on initially optimizing your image, it's better to have a lower scan speed so you can actually um, work with your image faster because you can see here that it's still working to scan this image and it's a lot slower than it would be during a scan speed of one. So you can see that it's starting to clear up and I'm simply doing this by adjusting my magnification and working distance knobs. So now we have gone past our bottom threshold of um, 2000 and we should stay between 2000 and 10,000 again for these conditions. Now this is a pretty clear image. However, say I did want it to be more focused. One thing that you can do if you're simply adjusting your working distance isn't working, because you can see no matter what we kind of do here, there's not a lot of fixing this right now. So we're going to go to our best case scenario here. And then from here, we are going to adjust the stigmators. And so you can either click on this key and you can adjust it, but we're going to be focusing on these two knobs on the side now. And from here, you can see that we are adjusting it and it's doing something similar. However, it's adjusting it more finely.
since we are working with a grid system, it is pretty easy to get it in its best focus possible. However, this is especially helpful to use the stigmators when you are working with a sample that is not uniform. And so you'll also see that I actually went over the optimal magnification. And so our image is not going to be as good under these conditions when you're in this magnification. However, in order to get the best image possible, I do suggest that you go slightly past the magnification you intend to image at. And so you can make that image as clear as possible. So when you do go out to the image magnification you would like, it can look even better and more crisp. So when I'm going to go in and save an image, I will usually use a scan speed of around five or around six. So if we come here, you can see that this is a very good image. Everything is quite clear on this image. Now, before I show you how to save an image to one of your files, I'm just simply going to show you a few of the other tools that are on this instrument. So say you wanted to quantitatively measure a certain distance on the sample, we can come to measurement in tools. And then from here, we have a lot of different options about how we would like to measure our sample. For a few examples, we have this one where you draw two lines. And then it will tell you this distance here. Furthermore, we have some other choices if it is not as parallel as these lines. For example, you can go from here to say here, and it will also show you that length as well. So you can toy around with all of these different measurement techniques based on the sample that you are actually running. And finally, to save our image, we're simply going to click on this key here. From there, you can have the ability to say, write notes, sign it, give a description. However, today we are just simply going to click OK. And finally, you can go to your folder here. Mine will go to Aubrey. And then I'm going to just enter today's date along with giving it a title. I'll just say test today. And so from here, you don't necessarily have to save it to a folder on this computer. You could simply save it to a flash drive if you would like to. You just simply have to navigate through um, this by going backwards and things of that nature to find your file that you want to save it to. And with that, that is how you optimize an image. Again, if you do need to change something like the beam intensity, um, you can simply click on it in the info panel, and then you can adjust it up here in the pad window. So now, in order to take our sample out, we want to reset this system. So I'm simply going to be zooming out. And I should have changed the scanning speed so we are at a scan speed of one again. Um, you may have seen how having it at a larger scan speed um, kind of warped the image when I was zooming out. And so for that reason, we like to have it at a lower scan speed. So now that I'm entirely zoomed out of this, I can just simply click home and that will actually reset the stage to its original position. but first we will want to adjust our working distance as well. So we're going to go to about 30 in order to make this change before we go to the home calibre or the home position. So now that we've moved further away and our working distance has adjusted, we are now going to click home And then from here, we are actually going to be ready to take out our sample. You're going to do so by first turning off the electron beam. 
and then you are going to vent the system. It is important to remember that before you leave the instrument, you put it back under vacuum. Um, so I'm not going to be taking out the sample at this moment. However, when you have taken out your sample, you are going to close the chamber door and you are going to click pump again in order for it to come to vacuum. Once it has come to vacuum, then you can exit the software by clicking the X and you will say exit only. And with that, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Tom Alston or any of his assistants um, so we can help you to begin running your SEM samples. Thank you.